This program is recorded live and may feature unexpected moments, sightings, or conversations. Viewer discretion is advised. My name is Alex, and my job is to explore the world around me and take you along for the ride. That's why they call it the jungle, sweetheart. I've guided a lot of adventures and have come to realize that our planet needs us now more than it ever has before. If you don't believe in climate change, you. I've learned it's only going to be through working together that we can restore biodiversity on our planet. Join myself and my friends as we bring you into the tent of conservation and the realm of the wild itself. And along the way, We'll be exploring wild things. You want to talk about sustainable seafood? Do I ever! In wild places. Welcome back, everybody, to another high octane episode of Misguided with yours truly, Alex. We've got Jeff uh, running the producer's booth for us tonight. Say hello, Jeff. Hello. I don't know if they can see you, but hopefully they can hear you. <laughs> um, how is it uh, going, everybody? I hope you're well in your corner of the world. Um, you know, I, I'm so appreciative that people from all over the place tune in to watch this little show because basically it's the rambling, you know, conundrums of a madman on the Internet. So I'm, I'm very happy that you guys have taken any amount of time to tune in and join us and be part of our little world here in Miss guided uh, which is a show really about I think appreciating being in the wild appreciating being in natural places um, but most of all appreciating being in Africa and right now we are stuck in California I don't know about the rest of you guys I don't know about you Jeff but I'm at least planning right now to be in Africa in October and November of 21 very excited uh, but since I'm in California I'm trying very hard to keep my little pieces of Africa with me so I've got my shuka uh, to bundle up in right now because it's very cold proper cold but what am I wearing? I'm, first off, very sad I don't have a shoe. Because I'll get you one. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you one. But, you know, you got shorts on, so, you know, you can't see them. <laughs> but it's still misguided. We'll see you later. <laughs> um, it looks like we've got Brian with us for a little bit. We've got my mom with us for a little bit. Um, I'm hoping maybe a few others stop in and join the stream. Um, because tonight we are talking about pseudoscience, uh, which is really about the study of bullshit. <laughs> we want to get super, super, or I guess specific about it, uh, not esoteric. Uh, uh, pseudoscience plagues every facet of science. Every single field has some version of it. And I don't know, my head kind of got spinning on this because the last few weeks at work, I've been up in the Sierra Nevada mountains and I've been staying at various hotels. And here at our little humble abode in the woods, we don't have television. So when I'm staying at a hotel, I have television. I'm um, just making sure the audio works. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, I can hear you. Um, you have television at a hotel, and it's been kind of fun to watch all these goofy shows. Now, Jeff, you don't have television either. No, no, everything's streaming now. Everything's streaming. This stuff right here, this is where it's at. Mammals totally has their head in the right space because the, the, the future of broadcasting is really online. But at a hotel, you get some, some old world pleasures, and uh, broadcast television is part of that. So I've been watching, you know, Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, uh, National Geographic, History Channel, TLC. I've seen... Um, um, my 600 pound life for the first time. Oh my god. <laughs> um, 90 Day Fiance. It's fascinating. <laughs> I see what makes it addictive. But, you know, I've been watching some of these programs thinking about the, the pseudoscience. You watch a show like Ancient Aliens and they're just yeah. spouting off nonsense the whole time. Or you watch The Curse of Oak Island. I don't know if, have you seen that? I haven't seen that. It's about that thing up in Nova Scotia. It's an island where they think treasure's buried on it. Uh, so these brothers bought, like, all the land rights and have just been digging it for decades <laughs> and they're calling it archaeology and the whole time I'm like I am an archaeologist and all of what you're doing is straight up treasure hunting <laughs> which you're calling are like I feel like Sean Connery in, in uh, the last crusade you call this archaeology <laughs> no uh, <laughs> looks like we've got Nicole with us too Nicole's here uh, and Alex, Alex Finden, welcome, welcome. Um, now, I do want to quickly just point out, tonight we are trying a new segment on the show, something that we've kind of toyed with before, but it's the first time we've got all the bells and whistles, I think, in the right place. Um, we're going to try playing a live interactive game. So this is going to be a little weird for you guys at home, because I don't know if you're watching on a phone, like I'm trying to watch the stream here so I can watch the comments. Um, 
But ideally, if you guys can switch over to a desktop computer or put it up on your smart TV, something like that, you're going to need your phone here in a little bit because we're going to be playing a game together, all of us, all at the same time. It's going to be on a website called cahoots.com. And Jeff, if you could, why don't we switch over to the, to the quiz page for a second so we can show you guys the, the, the passcode that you're going to need to get into the game. Okay. So you have to go to cahoots.com and remember to turn the audio channel off. We've got Pam with us too on the stream. Yes, everyone's tuning in. Everyone's excited. To play <laughs> fact or, or crap. crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it up there? Yeah, it's up. Okay, so you guys see up at the top of the screen, there's that s uh, series of numbers. You're gonna need that. That's our game pin later on. Um, so go to cahoots.com. Uh, again, I advise watching the show maybe on a desktop computer for tonight uh, and using your phone as your gameplay. Um, but go to cahoots.com, throw in that game pin. You're gonna need that at about 7.30ish, 7.40ish, uh, when we actually start our game. Uh, the pin code is 586-7779. So you'll go to Kahoots.com, hit play, and enter that pin code, and you'll be able to join the stream. So right now, this is what I'm seeing. Um, and what I can do is I can actually put it in the Mammals chat as oh, well. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Jeff will throw that number into the Mammals chat for you then, uh, so that way we can all see it. Um, we're gonna be trying to play this game together, which is which is gonna be pretty cool, and we do totally have prizes. Jeff, if you would come back to our full screen for a second. Oh, we are already on you, dude. Oh, beautiful. I'm way he's, ahead of you. he's super smart. He's a great producer. Thank you. Um, we do have prizes, which I will literally mail to you with a handwritten thank you for watching the show, because again, we're deeply appreciative anybody tunes into the show. Um, in third prize for whoever comes in third tonight, we've got <laughs> the Explore the Bug World Magnifier Habitat Jar. This little thing has a fake spider already loaded to go, or you can go out and catch your own bug and put it in there and, and take a look at it. Heck, it might make a fun thing to live stream. You don't know. Uh, in second place, <laughs> in second place, if you enjoyed Ublik back in grade school, here's Ublik in a tube. <laughs> I thought this was too cool to pass. In the this is a really cool, easy science experiment. To oh, totally. It's a you know cornstarch base basically, uh, but this is you know it got a cool test tube to it, and who knows, you could use this to like store Tic Tacs or paper clips or whatever when you're done. Um, and our grand prize tonight for whoever knows the most about pseudoscience <laughs> is a Cypits tabletop volcano. Uh, because I've, I've come to understand recently, Jeff, have you heard this? Some people believe volcanoes aren't real. Shut up. It's a real thing. There's people out there who legitimately believe volcanoes are made up. I don't even know what to say to that. I was blown away. So I thought, you know what? We're going to use our internet show to plug the idea that volcanoes are indeed real because uh, we're not on some gas giant planet like, like Jupiter. Um, heck, there's even volcanoes on Mars. I mean, why is this even, why are we even debating this or, or you know, plugging that at all? So we've got some prizes for you if you play our game. We're going to be starting that up at about 730 um, but as is tradition here on Misguided, uh, we have to hit up some serious stuffers. We have to hit up some legitimate conservation. Uh, so we're going to jump right into the headlines. But before we do that, let me just catch up on the comments reading through here. The link works. Excellent. It sounds like those of us trying it are, are having some success. Beautiful. Um, now, hopefully you guys will be able to see all the questions and play it on your phone and then watch the show on a desktop or on your smart computer or, computer, or, or TV, excuse me. Um, perfect. I'm glad to hear that's working. Keep that handy. We're going to need it at about 730. Uh, but for now, Jeff, if you would, take us away to the headlines. Headlines. Here we are. Now, I think a big part of this show is is trying to be serious about conservation, serious about wildlife. Uh, so we try our very best to highlight uh, four or five different things going on in the last week around the world. And I'm always concerned. The audio is working, right? I can hear <laughs> I can hear so many different things. Like, Mammals is in the background, so I got the lag, <laughs> plus the music from Cahoots. It's great. It's, it's a constant thing on this show of, like, the audio never works. And, <laughs> you know, the joke is, that's why it's called Misguided. <laughs> <laughs> um... But first up in the news, we've got Chinook salmon. Do you've got that for us, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you enjoy? You know, you're not a fish eater, are you? I'm not. A, I'm trying. You're trying. I'm trying. Salmon's fine. Salmon's fine. Yeah. Do you have a preferred like grilled or baked or poached or I don't know. I would say grilled. Grilled. But I'm I'm open to trying. Good. More. 
We'll say that. Well, Chinook salmon is off the menu. <laughs> Dang it. Other prey will do for endangered orcas. Uh, so this gets into a little bit here. A new study has found that endangered southern resident killer whales mainly consume endangered Chinook salmon, but will broaden their diet when this species isn't available. Um, and I did a little digging into this. Uh, Jeff, did you know that there were previously 37 distinct populations of Chinook salmon? Wow. I wow. Yeah, there's now 22. So that number is... How far spread were they? Um, I don't know. Just curious. <laughs> Out of 37, now they're down to 22. I, I can tell you that much. I you know everything. So I try really hard, but I don't actually know everything. Um, the researchers obtained data through uh, prey and fecal waste collected from the resident killer whales over a 13-year period. Now, that's a long time to be looking at whale shit, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I don't study that kind of, I'm not, I'm an anthropologist, I'm not that kind of a researcher, so I'm very happy. I have occasionally found coprolites, which are a human poo that have basically become fossilized sure. in the field, yeah, yeah. but totally different. We're not going through whale poo. Um, how do you, is it like a big net that you catch the whale poo in? Or <laughs> <laughs> what does that look? Because my understanding about whale poo is that it's effectively just this cloud of like underwater, yeah. it's an underwater shit cloud <laughs> <laughs> that fertilizes. <laughs> That fertilizes forests and, you know, it, it's vitally important to the ecosystem below because it, it's full of so many nutrients. Uh, but efforts to reinstate Chinook salmon populations through the hatchery efforts can play an important role in supporting resident killer whale populations, although these programs need to be carefully managed to ensure that stocks are diverse, the study suggests. Um, th th you know, that really gets into, like, Reintroducing anything is challenging. Making sure that populations are diverse is challenging. I know that Alex, if you're still watching, fish is kind of your your lane. Um, I don't know. Has he? Do we have any comments? Let us know how you collect whale shit. That's well, what I want to know. My understanding was that fish was kind of Alex's jam anyway. That's what he studied. So right. if you could help us understand any of that a little bit more in detail, I would I would be greatly appreciative. Um, I'm also seeing that some folks are trying out the new mammals emojis. I thought those are absolutely yes. awesome. Did you hear Jeff? There's emojis? They have their own built-in emojis. Now they're really cool. Oh my favorite is they have this bird with his wings out that says, wow. Like with all, it was like, that's, <laughs> I love it. The Owen Wilson bird. Yes. Wow. Um, let's see. We're going to jump onto our second headline. We're, uh, trying to keep it a little bit more positive. Uh, let's jump into the world of liar birds for a second. You got that for us, Jeff? I do. We are up. Great. Lyrebirds. Now, this is a bird from Australia, if you're not familiar, and they're famous for their bizarre songs. Um, they can imitate almost anything. Uh, there's an abundance of an amazing videos on YouTube in which you hear these birds imitating, like, toy guns or imitating uh, many numerous other birds. They can imitate people. They're very vocal. They're crazy. They are. Male superb lyrebirds can mimic the sounds of an entire multi-species flock during courtship and mating. The study suggests that males use the flock mimicry to deceive females into believing there is a predator nearby and thus preventing them from breaking off courtship or leaving before copulation, thereby increasing their chances of successfully mating. Now, this goes back to last week. Remember the spiders? We, we had a, a headline about spiders that were weaving intricate little presents to give to female spiders. And I said, my basic theory is that all around the globe at any given point, there are throngs and throngs of males of every species who really don't have anything better to do with our time because kind of all our thing is is eat sleep and make more of ourselves whereas the females have an abundance of things on their mind at any given point they're so preoccupied with the world around them and surviving i mean they, they just have a totally different outlook on the world that that you know basically males are just concerned with making more of ourselves all the time and the ladies just have a lot to do so they don't they don't really care half the time and I thought the lyrebird example was particularly fascinating because the male is so desperate that he's going to imitate predator calls to try to keep her around. <laughs> oh, boy, I, f I feel a new TLC show coming on. <laughs> uh, researchers say that the elabora elaboration of this mimic, uh, mimetic song could be driven by the male deception and sexual conflict rather than female's preference for male extravagance and male-to-male -male competition. Uh, which are the most common explanations for sexual selection. That gets into, a, gets into a whole nother can of worms. I would love to get a biologist who studies sexual selection on the show. I think it'd be really cool to chat about in great detail because it's a complicated subject. Um, when you talk about the laws of attraction or what works, what doesn't work, um, how genes are passed on, heck, it'd be fun to talk to a geneticist at some point, but we're still making all those contacts. Um, and tonight we didn't have anybody, which is why we're playing the game. <laughs> 
Um, let's get into a topic that I think is a little bit more uh, on the darker end. We've got persistence of slave uh, slave labor exposes the lawlessness of the Amazon gold mines. Now, this is something that I haven't shied away from talking about in in all the different groups that I've guided in every capacity that you know I've, I've been set in. I'm sure Jeff has hit on this as well. The reality of anybody living in the first world is that we rely on endless amounts of resources that are mined or, or brought out of generally third world countries or perceived third, third world countries. And that has an inherent price. Like the very fact that I'm able to stream this show right now is made through the miracles of modern science and innovation, but also through precious metals that were mined out of places like Africa and the Amazon. Um, a notorious mining f uh, family continued to be awarded permits and lay claim to land in the Brazilian Amazon after being busted for enslavement of workers in a 2018 raid. The gold mining operations overseen uh, were raided in 2018 and 2020 by labor inspectors who rescued 77 workers from slave labor conditions. Um, Nunes, a member of the family, was convicted last year in court but remains free pending an appeal. An investigation by Mongabay News Syndicate shows that even after the first raid and Nunes' inclusion on a blacklist of known enslavers, uh, she and her children were still able to apply for and obtain permits from the National Mining Agency. Because I think at the end of the day, money really speaks louder than anything else, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. Any other thoughts on money and mining, Jeff? <laughs> I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a serious problem. And of yeah. all the, the cultural issues going on, there, there are some serious human issues still at play. Uh, slavery has not gone away in many parts of the world. Trafficking hasn't gone away in many parts of the world. And you can look at this in the context of wildlife and people. And I think we have some serious things to address if we're to continue forward as a productive society. But again, these are rather heavy topics for a show that was intended to be on the more lighthearted side. So I've been working a little bit with a biologist named David Brown, uh, who is working with Manga Bay, which is who we get all of our news from. Um, and Jeff, you could bring up Manga Bay Kids for us. David is really interested in creating sustainable uh, conservation messaging from birth really through adulthood. And he and I have had a lot of conversations about the fact that there really is nobody who does that. I think Nat Geo was that entity at one point, but have become so diversified and so lost in their own way that they no longer represent the idea that from birth to adulthood, you can obtain reliable, consistent, beautiful imagery, news, content, whatever, from the same entity. And I've long thought that Mongabay, mongabay.com if you're not familiar, could become that, but they haven't really had a kid's arm. So this is the cover of their new website, mongabay.com for kids, which David and his colleagues have been working on. I advise you check it out. It literally just launched in the last few days here. It's a brand new thing, but I think it's, it's the first chance that we might see an, a new agency take over and really start to establish itself as we're gonna raise you from the moment of birth through your adult years with an appreciation for all things wild, which is really cool. I think he's bitter that Nat Geo has uh, become the mouse's thing. I am deeply bitter. Uh, but Nat Geo, you know, will always be my fantasy job. Sure. But if Manga Bay is doing that thing, I mean, that's more where my headspace is at. <laughs> uh, let's review the comments real quick. We've got uh, Taylor on with us. <laughs> there you go. Here? Yes, I don't oh know if you can my see them. Oh, God. Uh, the, game, the game will be on, yeah, at about 7.30, guys. So just hang in there. I know it's, we've got about 10 minutes to go. Um, when we come back, we're going to take a quick break here. Uh, we're going to have Rachel on with her sweet treat segment. And tonight she's made up something particularly special for our pseudoscience evening. Um, but for now, I think we're going to take a quick break. Jeff, could you take us to the oceans for a minute? Oceans. For the commercial, yeah. Yeah, we'll see you guys real soon. Here we go. I am the ocean. I'm water. I'm most of this planet. I shaped it. Every stream, every cloud, and every raindrop, it all comes back to me. One way or another, every living thing here needs me. I'm the source. I'm what they crawled out of. Humans, 
They're no different. I don't owe them a thing. I give. They take. But I can always take back. That's just the way it's always been. It's not their planet anyway. Never was. Never will be. But humans. They take more than their share. They poison me, then they expect me to feed them. Well, it doesn't work that way. If humans want to exist in nature with me and off of me, I suggest they listen close. I'm only going to say this once. If nature isn't kept healthy, humans won't survive. Simple as that. I mean, I could give a damn with or without humans. I'm the ocean. I covered this entire planet once, and I can always cover it again. That's all I have to say. Look at us with our tech still working. Whoa. <laughs> that <laughs> was pretty cool. And yes, guys, that was Harrison Ford. Um, he is on the board of Conser Conservation International. They did this whole series of new ads that are like different celebrities voicing different parts of the planet. And they're really cool and really powerful. But my favorite was, was Harrison Ford there with that rich, gravelly voice representing the ocean. And it really sucks you in because he's right. I mean, all of life is made possible through the oceans. So what, what an absolutely stunning choice of voice work for that and i'm not biased at all uh -huh. <laughs> um, beautiful the audio is on and everything uh how are you doing rachel i'm doing good how are you, are cold? you alex i am cold i am cold that's why that's i've got my own the blanket on you have the john wayne blanket i, do I have, have, john I have wayne the blanket. africa blanket john john. do you want to trade what do you want to trade or are you good with john i'm good Good. John's fuzzier. Now we're doing a <laughs> John's fuzzier, but this is made of wool and represents the Wasa Lion Conservation Group. Uh, <laughs> um, we're doing an episode on, on pseudoscience, and if, if you haven't joined us here in a few weeks, and it's been a few weeks since we've been live uh -huh. on mammals, um, we've we've officially launched a, a, a segment here for Rachel called Sweet Treats, because we'll tell the people your favorite is what. Baking. Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Baking. He told me to say that. I do love to bake, but I try not to do too much, or else we would be on my six hundred pound <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so you. I mean, you're a fantastic baker. You're far better than I am. I made cookies the other day, and she said they don't have any flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I did. She did on just my face. On my face. <laughs> no, they they were good. They just didn't. <laughs> that was that wasn't convincing, convincing at all. <laughs> they were good. They just didn't have any flavor. But I was surprised. <laughs> they just didn't have any flavor. <laughs> I, I was surprised because they had coconut coffee <laughs> in them, which I would have thought would have pepped the flavor up. Basically, I suck at baking. No. Yes. That's not true. Yes. You're perfect. Um, just want to address one <laughs> quick comment. Thank you. I know I'm perfect. Um, one quick comment. Okay. Uh, the set, I, I, uh, I'm quite fond of because it's all outdoor lawn furniture. And what I'm really hoping to do with Misguided is literally just put this all into the back of a truck and like drive somewhere so if we meet like a cool conservationist or scientist who i don't know for example lives in carmel or you know wherever uh we could just load the setup all of our equipment and drive and as long as we have wi-fi do the show i could you know take you yeah. and we can <laughs> take me <along. laughs> or we could pre-shoot your baking segment but you know everything's supposed to be mobile and i like the hokiness of like 
It's yeah. a flimsy, just junky <laughs> version. Just fall through at any time. Right? Because yours is Danger. like... Danger. <laughs> not good. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. Um, no. Back to the segment, though. Yeah. So, not actual moose. I think that's worth pointing out. Because we no. said it was chocolate moose. I would never eat a moose. Like, <laughs> can I observe it, moose? Yes. Oh, okay. You know, like Nothing. chocolate moose. Yeah. Or yeah. meese. Is it meese? It's moosin. Moosin. Moosin, yes. Uh, not made with actual moose. It won't enhance the flavor, right? Yes, okay. probably not. Um, but look what she's put up on top. <laughs> this is my Bigfoot foot. A little Bigfoot on moose action, yes. you know? Oh, so, so Bigfoot foot, Big right foot on top. Foot. It's just like a little plaster foot. Like <laughs> it's you. a little plaster <laughs> foot. Because we were joking about, you know, every Bigfoot researcher, like, goes out on the little lay of plaster yeah. mold of a Bigfoot foot. Exactly. So, so she's it's my inter interpretation. Of a Bigfoot foot. Now, yeah. what, what goes into a chocolate mousse? Is it hard to make? Well, this one was simple. Eggs, um, sugar, whipping cream, chocolate. Again, I use the endangered species chocolate, the oat milk and chocolate. The oat milk is pretty good. It is pretty good because it's kind of really comparable to like semi-sweet chocolate. And that's what this recipe called for. If you haven't heard, endangered species chocolate is one of the now many different chocolate companies that are trying to, to think more sustainably and productively in terms of chocolate production. Um, I emailed them back in December and had a bit of a back and forth. I was hoping to get them as a guest on the show, but... I don't know, they just kind of stopped responding. Um, I don't know, maybe we can rekindle that someday. But you've used quite a lot of their products in, yeah, in baked goods. And definitely. And what has been your take? Are they are they better than, I don't know, your Nestle's or your Ghirardelli's? Or are um, they any worse? I mean, like, they're, they're just as good. Just I mean, like, good. better quality. Um, I mean, it kind of depends on the recipe, too. Um, I find that the endangered species chocolate is more of, like, a darker chocolate. So if you're looking for, like... A milk chocolate you might not find it like I maybe they do have a milk chocolate I just haven't stumbled upon it sure sure So like if you're looking for a darker chocolate then theirs is definitely the way to go but this is my most comparable chocolate that I found like <laughs> semi-sweet <laughs> and uh, for reference Alex's dad my legs are absolutely freezing but I'm very stubborn <laughs> and and refuse to put on pants so I'm hoping the sugar rush yeah, from this mousse <laughs> keeps me warm going through the rest of the, the show because we've but got about another 40 minutes to go. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Great. Such a critic. <laughs> I'm a critic of myself because I and always want to do better. you threw down my cookies hard. But I, I, I throw down myself all the time, too. You body slam those cookies into the ground, though. <laughs> There was a little fat separation with this mousse, and that's what I'm disappointed by. Well, hey, you can't tell by <laughs> looking at it. But it's still good. It's very good. But I wanted to say how I made the Bigfoot foot. Yeah, tell the people. Oh, yes. So I saw on, <laughs> like, I don't know, I think it was Facebook or Pinterest, that if you put brown sugar down and you make your own imprints in the brown sugar, you could pour white chocolate or whatever chocolate in there to create the shape that you want. So I made these in brown sugar, but the only thing I found was the brown sugar doesn't come off. Oh boy. <laughs> it, on the video, the brown sugar didn't go along with the chocolate, ah. but it works for Bigfoot's foot. Well, this is a tasty foot. I never thought I'd say that about feet, but I'm enjoying it. Um, we're gonna send you guys off to our musical moment of the week real quick. And when we come back, we're gonna be playing our live interactive pseudoscience game. Again, I hope you guys all have uh, that code handy. We're gonna obviously show you that code one more time. Jeff left the number for you in our comment thread, which I'm just uh, scrolling back through here real quick. You don't trust me? No, I'm just trying to find a read. You don't trust me. I trust you. Okay. He doesn't trust you. <laughs> uh, if you want to play the game with us, log on to cahoots.com. Okay. Um, it's, it's free. All you have to do is hit play. And then from there, it'll ask you for a game pin. And you'll need to enter the number 586. Whoop, it bounced away. What was it? 586 7779. Uh, and you can find that in the comment thread for this uh, live stream. Um, enter that pin into the game and you'll be ready to go you come up with a player name and everything and we'll be playing live and interactive together here but first musical moment of the week sit back and enjoy uh some samba music to the quote of an anthony bourdain line
bam, audio on, everything's working. Nailed it. Cool, I hope you enjoyed that random musical moment of the week. We had our samba, I don't know, I was just in a samba mood this week, uh, and I've certainly been reading a lot of Anthony Bourdain stuff lately. He's kind of my homeboy, you know, I guess, <laughs> for lack of better phrase. <laughs> I've never heard you say that. He's my homeboy. Never homeboy. say it again. Never say it again? Mm -hmm. He's my homeboy. <laughs> um... Guys, we're going to try to play a game together. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy there's like a bunch of folks on the stream. Like, there's a good chance we might have a real test of this. Now, the challenge for us, just so you at home know, given it's our first time playing it, and we intend to do this a lot more, it's just tonight's our like grand reveal. I don't know where you guys are at really in time. And Cahoots works this way. So, we're going to see the question. You'll be able to answer, you'll be able to read. There's going to be usually four options to answer from. When everybody's picked their answer, the game automatically jumps to the next like slide, which isn't the next question. It'll be like, it'll show you what the right answer was. So the challenge is the latency. You know, Jeff and I are waiting about 15 seconds or so behind where the audience appears to be in broadcast. So I don't really know yet how that's gonna gel. So just give us a second to figure out that rhythm. And I'm hoping we all settle into it together. But now's the time. Um, you wanna log on to Kahoot. Thank you, Pam, thank you, Pam for Correcting me, there was no S. I kept saying cahoots. Kahoot.com. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've got my phone right here. I'm just going to go to the internet. Kahoot. Oh, yeah, it is kahoot.it. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to enter game pen. Jeff, can you read that pen back for me real quick? All right. It was 586-7779, right? Oh, you don't need me. Jeez. Well done. Nickname. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm going to have, I'll just put misguided. Okay. So you know that I'm in there too. Misguided guide. There we are. Okay, go. All right, you're in. Wow, look at the people. Oh my God. Do you have a bunch of folks on there? Some people in. Now, like you guys, this is this is all I can see. It says you're in. Uh, see your nickname on the screen. You got to watch your actual the, the the live broadcast at the same time. So that's where this is just a little bit funky. Yeah. We're gonna make it work. We're gonna do our very best. It's gonna be great. Um, we're gonna give them about what do you say? Another 20, 30 seconds. Sure. To let everybody who's interested get in the gate here. Yeah, we've got seven people, including you, right now. Excellent. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. This is gonna be this is gonna be exciting. This I is. I wonder who Skipper B is. That's Brian. That was called sarcasm, <laughs> sir. <laughs> now again, uh, we do have prizes, and I know right now I'm probably a little tiny window in the bottom. It's fine. Leave it that way if it is. Yeah, you're good. Little tiny window at the bottom. Now, we do have prizes, which I will be actually mailing to people. Uh, we have a bug habitat jar complete with fake spider on the inside in third place. Uh, for whoever comes in second, we've got oobleck in a tube. And you can use the tube for, I don't know, storing Tic Tacs or, or um, old erasers or whatever you've got lying around the house right there. And in first prize, I think this is probably the coolest of the lot, we've got Cybits Tabletop Volcano. Because some people think volcanoes aren't real. And I think that's bullshit. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so we'll see who wins our prizes for the night. We'll get those in the mail hopefully in the next week. Um, we look like we're ready to go, Jeff. So we just fade to the screen and we uh, go from there. Yeah, pull up our main quiz. <laughs> so much and our audio channels are turned on yeah okay yeah, fact good. or crap now jeff is aspiring <laughs> to to do uh, voiceover work so we're gonna have him layer into that fact or crap kind of stuff <laughs> it's, gonna be it's a game show we're gonna do this all the time it's gonna be great so jeff oh, take us away let's get this game started so we're gonna press start on the thing boom and then we're gonna switch over. get ready guys here we go Two, one. Oh my goodness, it's working! Oh my god! All right, so I know the answers. Obviously, I wrote the quiz, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, answer Only last. Wrong Only wrong. Yeah. Only wrong. Um, we also set each question to a full minute for yep. you to answer because again, we don't know what the latency is. So just give it a sec. We're gonna figure it out. It's gonna be great. Do you want me to read the questions and stuff? If you want to. I could. I suppose. Oh, that's right. Jeff Cam is on too. Hey, look at that. Okay. How would you like me to read this? In your most announcery voice ever. <laughs> oh, God. I gotta dig deep here. 
Also, I need my glasses. But <laughs> we've got 20 seconds. So, ideas and beliefs that sound like science but not supported by evidence are known as fact, pseudoscience, theory, and or law. Boom. Nailed it. I'm in seventh place. Wow. Good job. Oh, cool. I, I'm back on the stream. It's totally doing it. Yeah. It's so far so good. And the audio's on and everything. Oh, guys, we're nailing this right now. I'm so, I'm so happy. <laughs> Okay, so then how long does it stay on this screen, or do I have to move it? You have to jump to the next one. Oh, well, then I'll take my beer. I'm going to go to the thing. And we're going to go next, shall we? Three, two, one, next. Here we go. Here we go. Are you ready to rumble? Is it doing it? Scoreboard. So we got the scoreboard up oh, right now. Oh, the scoreboard, now. yeah, that's right. I forgot that was part of it. So Alex, uh, not you, Alex, Fenton, is in the lead with 966 points. Okay, so I'm, I'm just watching what they're watching. They're just now seeing the scoreboard come up. Okay. Oh. Wait, no, never mind. Now it's showing them the, the right answer. Okay. Cool. Okay, no, we're just figuring out our timing. It's going to be great. It's an experimental episode, too. Yeah. Shall we move on to the next question? Go for it. Yeah, let's keep this party going. All right, next. True or false? The prefix pseudo means true or false. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. This is so good. This is fun. How nope. many questions are there? 25. 25. <laughs> Again, I didn't know how long to make it or like where our timing was at, so this is very experimental. I'm very appreciative the audience is hanging in there with us. I'm trying to keep uh, tabs on our comments here. Hopefully you're all enjoying it after one whole question. They get way better. I promise, I promise you, they get better. Give me a Bigfoot question. There's definitely a Bigfoot question. Yes. <laughs> so on my screen, I've got 15 seconds on it, but you. Um, it should tell you when everyone's answered. Does it say on the far right? What? Oh my god, see, I'm learning too. Guys. On the far right, it should tell you how many people have answered. Oh, seven people have answered. <gasps> cool, oh so when god. you see all, all of them, you can... And we can just skip. Yeah. Oh my god. This is... Incorrect again. <laughs> Alex, you made this quiz. What's going on, dude? <laughs> we have eight players now. Oh my god. This is so good. So we're going to go to next and see the scoreboard. Pew! Oh, people are climbing in the ranks. <laughs> so Alex is still in the lead. Then Pseudo Sprout. Then Tay. Then Pam. And then Mama Bear. All right. So let's go to the next question. Perfect. Let's let's keep this going. Yeah, quiz. Here we go. So good. What is Bigfoot called in Sumatra? <laughs> I told you. What? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and these, I mean, it's pseudo. It's pseudo science. <laughs> <laughs> Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit. I want it to be? I don't know if I'm right. Though. I had a little bit too much fun with this. <laughs> Did you? I couldn't tell. Oh, yes, I was right. Huh, I should be playing too. Okay, so I think that was everyone. Four, seven, yeah, eight. Hey, look at nice. that. Look at us. Oh, Pam's beating Taylor now. Go Pam. Go Pam. I told you. And then we're going to go to next. <laughs> next question. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to give some context, context after this. Yeah. <laughs> you going to read it for us? An ape beating animal known as the Congo bear. I'm not going to do the Latin name. Ursus Sacramento. <laughs> has recently rattled scientists. <laughs> Your answers are yes, absolutely. <laughs> what? See, there's bears in the Congo? Or D, no, that's crap. <laughs> Let me know when all eight have answered and oh, when we yeah. get to the score. We're flying through it, they've already answered. Excellent, man, we're all just on it. Yes. Um, get to the scoreboard page, but don't go any further because I need to sure. explain what, what the hell Congo that was. Um, Congo, so context. Sometimes I get groups when I'm guiding that are really annoying and groups that I don't know They just like are out to lunch man. They're asking questions and I'm like, do you guys even hear yourself right now? So I'll see what I can get away with and over the last few years I've actually created a fake cryptid called 
Congo bear. <laughs> So I would start telling people about, you know, gorillas and bonobos and all that. And then I would just kind of casually slip in the fact that there's a bear in the Congo, which there's, there's, there's no bear in the Congo, not even a little bit. It's totally made. I, I made it up. Congo bear. I thought it was funny and cute sounding. Um, I described it as as um, about the size of Winnie the Pooh, you know, you know, just some descriptors like that. But then I came up with a Latin name for it, because when you can pull Latin names out of your hat, people think you're legit oh, yeah. so its latin name is ursus sacramentum which means mystery bear because it doesn't exist God. <laughs> so it's a total fabrication of mine um, <laughs> it's a misguided animal um oh. <laughs> so i know that one might have taken you for a loop a little bit but i think the answer was no there's no the mystery bear. no that's crap i think was the answer anyway yeah. moving on yeah moving on <clears throat> question number five Time for a sense check. <laughs> what are some signals that a Bigfoot is near? Oh, what are some signals that a Bigfoot... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Groaning. Screaming and howling. Knocks. Or none of the above. <laughs> Define groaning. <laughs> Would like, you like to give us uh, a Or is that moaning? <laughs> I feel like that's a sigh. Uh, <laughs> the sighing Bigfoot. <laughs> That's an angsty teenager Bigfoot. Angsty teenage Bigfoot. Yeah, that's, uh, um, well, five people got it right, so hey, look at you guys. None of the above, because Bigfoot isn't real. <laughs> 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 Moving on. Trick question. <laughs> if a claim is mainly supported by anecdotal evidence, stories are hope, or claim change is pre-changed. Stories are claims by people. It is likely fact. Don't mess with has. <laughs> pew pew pew. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> you didn't read it right though. It's fact. Don't mess. Don't mess. Don't mess. Fact. Don't mess with Tejas. Pew pew pew. <laughs> 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 oh god, I haven't seen any of these questions. No, and I, I thought, I don't want to show him because I want him to be part of the experience. Oh god, this is so good. I think we're still waiting on one person. It's me. Oh, it's you. God, dude. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Finden's killing it, by the way. He's got six correct. Nice. Is he on a streak? Oh, It'll tell you if they're on a... Oh, uh, he's been on yeah. a streak for a few questions now. Get extra bonus points. I feel that volcano for you, Alex. Oh, my God. Here <laughs> it goes. All right. Next question. Number seven. <laughs> oh, chupacabra. The first chupacabra was first reported in March of 1995. What does the name chupacabra mean? That's a good picture. This is an excellent picture. Night sucker. <laughs> Devil sucker. <laughs> Goat Devil sucker. <laughs> Blood sucker. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is where if you know some language, y you could figure it out pretty easily. Yeah. That picture is dope, though. Look it's at that thing. One. Hey. We're all done. Here we go. There's actually a lot of movement apart from Finden, who's just pff, killing Just it. crushing it. <laughs> Alex, I feel this volcano is coming your way in the mail. <laughs> just write his name on it now. Just uh, <laughs> Sharpie Alex <laughs> underline. All right. I want to know who's going to get this bug magnified. This is kind of cool. I would be in the third place. People is historic times? People in historic times. People is this is... <laughs> okay, I'm just reading it as, as it is. People <laughs> in historic times believe the Earth was flat. These are fun. True. And they also believe doctors didn't need to wash their hands. <laughs> False. Jeez. Give humanity a little more credit. We're not that dumb. Maybe. They also believe... <laughs> Jesus. They also believe women's orgasms were a sign of insanity, so... <laughs> <laughs> or the last one, which is, what do you mean? The Earth is flat, you donut. <laughs> a little Gordon Ramsay action for you. You had way too much fun. I had a lot of fun. Oh this was God. my, like, 11 o'clock to 12.30 today. Oh, yes. Um. Wow. I thought that one. person got it. Was that you? 
I didn't, no, I, I delivered really the wrong one. Uh, so misconception is that people in historic times believed the Earth was flat, which is totally false because people have known the Earth is round since at least ancient Greek times. We're talking 3000 BCE or, or earlier. Um, they solved it with math. Can you believe that? Math doing something? Uh, but even in the medieval era, up through Columbus's time, people knew the Earth was, was round. Um, I'm not really sure where the pervasive myth that people thought the Earth was flat came from, um, but that's become the narrative. You know, Columbus himself really didn't become like a big player in the spectrum of knowledge until about 1920, when Italian immigrants to the United States needed like a dude to like rally behind and get excited about, and Columbus became their guy. He's a very recent arrival on our canon of people that we seem to care about and everyone else we just forget and you know like in reality we're all going to live and then evaporate and it was like we're never here yeah. uh, except if you're Columbus <laughs> um, but no people people knew the earth was round moving on moving on where's the heart seat I was so angry reading researching this one oh, oh. No. <laughs> I just the whole creationism thing I'm like nope yeah. Nope. <laughs> you still did the question, though. Because it needs to be on here. <laughs> this is relevant. Oh, boy. Well. Not bad. Three people. Three people got away. Yeah, according to a biblical creationist, the world is about 6,000 years old. And they get that number based on... I, I don't know. <laughs> because... Different biblical scholars disagree on how old the earth is, according to yeah. the Bible, which is weird because they're all reading the same. But it's just like, what? What? Is, what? Um, most of the time, it's based off Noah and Abraham, specifically Noah, Abraham and Moses, not to get too biblical. But they come up with this rough figure of about 6,000 years based on specifically Abraham trying to sacrifice his son. It's weird, obscure knowledge. Just totally forget it because you're never going to need to know it. Because next question. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. Next question. Number What's... 10. <laughs> <laughs> you can literally see the age of the earth written in stone at the Grand Canyon. It's written in stone, guys. <laughs> How old is planet Earth? You need to know this. Please don't get this one wrong. Don't fail us. I'm going to deliberately get it wrong. <laughs> this bugs me now. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, how old is Earth? <laughs> All right, I'm trying to keep judge of time. It's, you know, about 7.50. We're on number 10. That's, that's reasonable. That's pretty good. We're having fun. Yeah. I think in the future we'll advise, grab a drink. Where did I put mine? Here it is. Um... <laughs> Grab a drink. Sit back. This is oh bar trivia. Oh, no. You're going to be disappointed. Oh, no. <laughs> Did nobody get it right? One person got it right. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it is not something I think that you, you come across very often, but the Earth is how old, Jeff? I, uh, you know, uh, it's the 4.543 billion years. Roughly. <laughs> 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 I just I feel like if you can at least say four to four and a half billion years. Okay. I don't know. I just I feel like most you know that's something that we should all just know. You know, like the, it's it's not ever going to be necessary, but like I don't know. I find it cool <laughs> when you go to the canyon. It's cool. And Miko's on the stream. Hey, Miko. Well, Miko's here. Play with us. Yeah. Um, what was the number? Again? It was five five. It is uh, five eight six seven 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 nine. Yeah. So jump on to Kahoot. Dot .it amico and you it's not too late you could probably still join the game with us you um, can destroy alex destroy you. actually uh, pseudo sprout is getting pretty close uh, next question next question let's here keep this this show on the road here moving on <laughs> camel spiders dot 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 <laughs> oh my god <laughs> scrim like bibs <laughs> scrim like bibs inject toxin and pray on GI in Iraq. <laughs> Eat camel stomachs, specifically. I wrote that with Lynette in mind. Yeah, Eat camel weird. stomachs. Yeah. Specific, that's just something she would say. That is very Lynette. Aren't actually spiders. <laughs> They're... Soap you kids. That one. <laughs> <laughs> I helped. <laughs> and I helped. Uh, are aggressive and dangerous. Do you remember in Kruger when I got a uh, camel spider that jumped on my foot? Yeah. 
That was crazy. Yeah. Cray, cray. Cray, cray. And I kicked him off. You did. <laughs> Jackie Chan karate and, kick. Uh, you lived to tell the tale. I did. Yeah, look at you. And then we got bit by paper wasp. But that's a different story. Done. I agree, Alex. The billion part is probably worth it. He said that we just need to know the billion part. I, I agree. Like, if you yeah. can't say four to four and a billion, that's very fair. But knowing the Earth is billion yeah. <laughs> years old, at least, I think that's very important. Yeah. 6,000 years. What in tarnation? Yeah. We're going to settle the West. I don't know. It's still pretty close. Still pretty close. All right. We're going to move on to the next question. True or false? Most people swallow an average of six spiders in their sleep per year. True or false? How many spiders have you eaten recently? Recently? Would nope. you, if we, if we did an episode in Vietnam, if we could fund to go there and like do an episode of Misguided from there, would you eat a street food fried tarantula with me? Yeah. I would not. <laughs> 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 I, I would do it if you did. I would probably do it without you, but I'd rather. You do would it do it without you. me? Yeah. Why not? You would eat it. We'll just do a whole Jeff bit of eat this weird thing. Jeff eats weird shit on the streets <laughs> of Vietnam. I will probably vomit at some point, but sure. I'm down. Let's go. Okay. Let's go do an episode in Vietnam. Okay. To Saigon. Uh, eight people have answered. I think that's everyone, yeah? I think so. But well, we got five seconds. We'll give it another. Three, two, one. I need to figure out how to add some more games or game sounds to this so it's a little more yeah. sprucey. But you guys are our, our beta audience for this game. We're going to bring it, I think, a lot more and, and try to do like a bar trivia kind of thing. In uh. fact, there's even a way to play it in teams, <gasps> which is kind of cool. What? Yes. So we can have I'm in ninth, Congo Bear. Ninth place. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> The Mongolian death <laughs> <laughs> Which is a real thing, like, in, su in the pseudoscience world. Sure, it's, yeah. a, it's a real thing. Uh-huh, as real as Mothman. The Mongolian death worm is said to be found in which desert? The Gobi Desert? Oh, well, we're already done. Cool. <laughs> Five people got it right. Wow. The Gobi Desert! See, that's, that's a multi-brained question. Like, you have to also know your geography for that. Right. Well done. Guess. Well or done. Or just guess. Oh my God. <laughs> Said the voice from the dark. Your mom is in second place. Ooh, Alex swallows six spiders a day while awake. That's super gross. That's <laughs> that would scare me. No thanks. Uh, when frightened ostriches, da da da, bury their head in the sand. Run the. You can say well, it. I can say it because it's misguided now. Run the fuck away. <laughs> Kick the lion's. So hard, the line dies. Which is a thing I've heard other guides say, so I put it in. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Run in circles for funsies. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard that third one many a time. When you look into the face of an ostrich, is it like the vibe of lights are on, no one's home? That was literally what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you look into their eyes, and it's like... You can hear their brain struggling. <laughs> yeah. Like, my sister and I used to do this thing where we would, like, envision the sound brains would make if they were working. Like, sure. if you look like at a, a cool dog, like a police German Shepherd, its brain sounds like a, like a space computer. It's like, dur -dur -dur -dur, you know, just yeah, like yeah. there's stuff working. An ostrich would be like an old-timey grandfather clock revving <laughs> up. It would be like a... <laughs> and then he would hear... I would. I was gonna say the AOL boot up sequence. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be like a turtle. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, one frightened ostrich just run the fuck away. <laughs> it's a goddamn ostrich. I yeah. They run away. They don't bury their head in the sand. That's a dumb pseudoscience. Who man. answered that? Did someone answer that? Um. Alex has now uh, gained his lead back. Right? Nice. This volcano could be yours. True or false? <laughs> you get warts from touching toads or frogs. Well, he's laughing, so that's an indicator on. <laughs> no, I just I like the way it reads. You get warts from touching toads. You and get frogs. warts from touching toads or frogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. Oh wait, can, is there? 
frog. There you go. I'm in an emoji frog. Yes. Frog. Yes. People are moving up in the ranks. This, I think, is timing well. It's it's 8 o'clock. We're on 15. This, this is perfect. Great. This is perfect. Again, in the future, we should build it more as, like, bar trivia. But I think it's, I'm having fun. This is super. Granted, I'm here. Most <laughs> fish have a memory that lasts about three seconds. Close to a minute. What was the question? Several studies show that far from being a memory challenge, fish can learn. <laughs> <laughs> All fish are. Just keep swimming. Just oh, that should have been one of the answers. <laughs> I'm, in tenth, I'm in 10th I'm in 10th place now. <laughs> I've deliberately answered everything wrong, and I keep going down in place. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Oh, this is very good. Oh, Brian's in second now. Uh oh, Brian, you might get the ooblet tube. <laughs> Who's in third? Oh, I moved fast. I think it's your mom. Wildlife poaching impacts every nation in the world. Only poor shithole countries. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I was having too much fun. What is this with poor regulation on wildlife protection and places that have <laughs> A-roll wildlife? <laughs> This has Alex Coburn written all over it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Reading this and knowing other people are seeing it yeah. is even funnier to me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Two people said a roll of I picked that, so. <laughs> Who was the other person? That's what I want to know. Oh, yeah. This is Alex good. Alex is in first. Brian's in second. Your mom is in nice. third. Nice. And then someone is in fourth, and Taylor is in fifth. Still a chance, guys. It's also about timing, how quickly you can hit the answer. That counts. Yeah. We probably should have said that before. But it's fine. Sloths <laughs> are lazy, non-contributing zeros. <laughs> You're making it really <laughs> difficult to read all of these answers. Living fertilizer machines, because, you know, they poop a lot. Cursed with a metabolism 40 to 45% of comparatively sized other animals. Always down to clown. There it is. <laughs> we talked about that one earlier. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Always down to clown and the face. <laughs> Look at that face. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh god this is cool. are we having fun yet I'm having a great I hope time. you guys at home are having fun because we're having a ton of fun it was fun even just putting this together it's fun hanging out with Jeff and knowing that you guys are out there playing I, I'm having a great time thanks for interacting with us totally yeah this couldn't be possible without you guys oh my god there's two right answers there were so that was a bit tricky I thought let's, let's put you know and always down the clown wasn't one of them yeah, and I, I meant to go back and adjust that question because there were the two right answers, and I thought maybe that's hard because it doesn't say there's multiple. And anyway, we'll fix it for a future quiz. Oh, Taylor's been bumped. Sorry, not in the top five anymore. Uh oh. Uh oh. True or false? If an experiment has an error in it, that means it's worthless. True or false? <laughs> That there is a trick question. <laughs> oh, we're already done. Hey, look at that. Pew. I don't know. I feel like it's still anyone's game. It is anyone's game, yeah. Volcano like is awaiting someone. We've got an oobleck tube, which you get two prizes here. You get the oobleck and the tube. Uh, <laughs> 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 and then, the bug catcher with a magnifying glass and fake spider. I <laughs> thought that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the oobleck and the tube. Right, Here it is. Choose the meme that best fits the following statement. Oh my god, yes. The Earth's climate has always changed. <laughs> so I'm sorry if these are a little tricky to read. Oh, this is good. 
This is a good one. But you've got a full minute to try to answer here. Choose the meme that best fits the following statement. Oh, I'm just realizing the squares are yeah, over some of it. Yeah. It. All right, we'll have to fix that for future games. Again, this was an experiment. What station? The squares are like over some of the text, so it's a little bit hard oh. to read. But if you know some of these, they might you might just get it. So th this might be a little bit weird. Sorry about that, guys. A good idea in theory. <laughs> hey, it's our first one. It's fine. Yes. Did somebody get it? Three people got it. Yes. Um, was it uh, wasn't a complete dud. <laughs> Number 21. <laughs> Data show that childhood vaccines cause autism. I knew it. <laughs> Only in Seattle. Wake up, America. We have the sickest children in the world. <laughs> there is no proven link between vaccines and autism. How many people have answered? Oh, God. Uh, eight people. <laughs> okay, I'm going to wait a second because... Well, tell me when we get to nine. Okay. Unless ten aren't Wait, playing. Do we only have eight people? Eight including you or nine including you? I don't know. I keep saying that I'm in tenth place. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose one. But since we've all answered, yellow, wake up America, we have the sickest children in the world. I googled anti-vaxxers and looked up images. That was literally a sign somebody was holding. Oh my god. <laughs> literally, so I just wrote it verbatim. Hey! Eight people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Number 22. Male lions. Never hunt. Sometimes hunt. Always hunt. And hunt when they're good and ready. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, give us your best lion. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Come on. Don't be like a certain Australian. <laughs> <coughs> oh, that's a pretty picture. It was. It's a stock photo. I didn't take that. I will take a photo like that someday. Eventually. This year. This year, potentially. I'm going to get a new lens. I'm going to get a 600 for this one. Yeah, you are. I'm going to get a 150 by 600 millimeter. The bazooka. <laughs> that is what they call it. Um, eight people have answered, so I'm just going to maybe skip, or do we want to wait 10 more seconds? Well, I don't know. It's almost thinking like there's other people. Okay, so it looks like there's might, maybe so nine players. Nine people, I think. Cool. Cool. Yeah, sometimes hunt. Sometimes hunt, yeah. So the big myth there is that male lions never hunt. False. You know, females do a lot of the hunting, a lot of maneuvering. But males do hunt. Uh, if, if a male is dominant within a pride, he's definitely going to be an active player. He's certainly going to be eating first. You know, he gets first dip. But you got to think of it this way. When the male lion was younger, before he took over a pride or a territory, he probably lived with other males in a bachelor group and definitely did hunting because those boys worked together. There's also a chance that male might live by himself, particularly when he's younger or even when he gets older. And he's obviously going to have to hunt uh, then as well. But lions have kind of cornered the market on strategy by working together as far as cats go. Because again, most cats are solitary. They don't really work with other cats to begin with. So that's yeah. kind of instinctual for them. Um, but no, the myth there is that they they never hunt. And that's, that's false. Sometimes. We'll just go with that. Sometimes. Hunt. Yes. But anyway, moving on. Bears. Bees. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Science is rarely da, da, da. Right. right, wrong, proven, Dis disproven. <laughs> that is <laughs> the perfect picture. <laughs> oh no! Again, I can just picture someone having fun with this little erupting volcano. <laughs> I think this is the kind that you put baking soda in. Probably. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> I don't know what else you do. Look, it's got like a label so you know how Volcano works because they're real. Oh my god. Again, two yeah, prizes, the Ublik and the Tube. This is a I think second place is actually better than oh, first place. Tube Blake. <laughs> <laughs> and Bug in a Jar. <laughs> I'm so glad Rachel was here. Me too. Oh god. Proven! Science is rarely proven because yes. they err on the side of, well, maybe not. They're very Jewish in that sense. Eh, maybe. Anyway, moving on. True or false? Oh my god, we're almost at the end, people. 
Hippos kill more people than any other animal in Africa. Look at those hippos. Look at them hippos. What are the birds in Mexico? They look like storks to me. Because see, some of them are sitting back on their full foot. I would guess yeah. those are storks. We'll never know. We'll never know. This is fun. We should we could do this for like certain themes or certain parts of the world. Um, certain this animal groups. Literally any episode. This is super fun. Um, oh my gosh. You were the only one who did false. Yeah. Good. Excellent. It's Good the job. last question. No. No. It's almost over. We're right we'll on time, though. Try get out. The timing. I'm really, I'm really happy about the timing. I think that's working well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. Last question, everyone. What color is the blood in your veins? Red. <laughs> Red blooded American. <laughs> Blue, like the best Doritos. Are they the best Doritos? Yes. <laughs> A warm, mellow yellow. Granny Apple Green. What? <laughs> I panicked and hit the square. <laughs> says blue are the best Doritos. Um, they totally are. <laughs> blue Dorito, Brian has got it. Blue Doritos are the best. America. America, America red. <laughs> the answer is red. <laughs> <clears throat> take well, a take a screenshot oh of the final God. leaderboard. Third place, Mama Bear. Second place, Skipper B. And first place, drum roll please. Alex right on. So we're wow. gonna, again, we're going to be sending these out to you guys. Um, we've got Alex then with our volcano. We've got Brian with our tube lick. Thank you, Rachel. And Mom, I hope you have fun with your new bug catcher that comes with a fake spider on the inside. That's pretty awesome. Uh, that's pretty neat. Um, I think this was a, a success. I agree. This was amazing. Let's, uh, you guys play. yeah, me too. Deeply appreciate if anybody showed up and, and actually played the game. Uh, you got a shot of that so we can remember forever and ever. So, guys, I'll be shooting you guys a, a message, I guess. And, well, I know Brian and, and Mom's up. Gives us the percentage of what they got correct. Oh, does it? Hold you on. want to guess? <laughs> Wait. Wait for the like. Oh, here we go. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Kahoot at work. Runners up was someone. <laughs> was that you Rachel I came into the game late but yeah. someone uh, difficult questions and then it has nine so like the ninth question or were there nine questions that were difficult no there are nine different Alrighty, so uh, Jeff, if you cut us back to our full screen for a second, um, guys, that was, I thought a ton of fun. I hope you had fun with it. Uh, we're hoping to bring that on as as a continual piece of misguided, and then eventually a breakaway piece that we can run independently. I think it'd be a ton of fun to do um, on mammals live interactive uh, bar trivia nights where we can set up like a fake little bar out here and everybody at home we encourage stay home uh, be safe grab a drink at your place of residence please don't drink and drive um but hang out with us and you can work in teams if you want you can work independently because uh, kahoot allows for that but i think it'd be a ton of fun to do all kinds of wildlife and environmental and nature and conservation trivia games um jeff and i out here hosting and kind of bringing some life to it and then all of you guys at home and i think it'd be a fun thing if we can keep up bringing prizes on the show um ideally oh, i can keep uh, snagging some swag from our conservationists that we interview on the program but for now there's a goofy little like kids toy science store around the corner i'm perfectly content to keep grabbing stuff like this <laughs> for for giveaway prizes and drop that to you in the mail um so alex brian and mom be looking for that in the mail coming up soon um i don't have any misguided swag yet but i'm thinking of doing some stickers at the very least um so i don't know maybe if, if i get that turned around in time but anyway it is 
right about time, guys. We usually end at, I don't know, about 8.15 or so. So thank you all so much for coming out, spending some time with us tonight. I hope you enjoyed our game. We'll definitely do, be doing that again. Tonight was more of a sit back and relax kind of night. Pseudoscience, bullshit, and you. Uh, coming up, though, in the next few weeks, we're going to be interviewing uh, biologists from Seacology, which is a conservation group dedicated to island conservation specifically. She's got a lot to say. She's a very intelligent woman. I'm, I'm really excited to, to actually have a chance to sit down and chat with her. We're also going to be going to the local bird rescue facility and interviewing some people there and seeing what that work looks like. Um, and we've got much, much more coming up here in the next few weeks. Uh, season two of Misguided is quickly coming to its terminus. We do 12 episodes a season. We're on episode eight tonight. Um, the last few episodes weren't streamed on Mammals for a variety of reasons, but happy to be back on our home platform tonight. Um, and then we're going to take probably a two to three week break so we can plan some new stuff. And then we'll be back at you with season three around about uh, May. Um, Jeff, do you have any last minute thoughts? Um, I hope you had fun. I want to keep this going. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah. And uh, we're so happy Rachel could join us as always and make a delicious treat. Where did I put the rest of it? Here it is. I'm going to actually, as soon as we're done on the show here, just pound this down. Uh, this was absolutely excellent. Um, if you guys like, let me know in the comments, and we'll post the recipe she used for that. Um, that's going to be a returning segment on every episode, Sustainable Cooking and Sweet Treats with Rachel. Uh, so until we see you guys again next, thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>